But I, quite frankly, just didn't think it would be an issue. And most people don't. Most people aren't gonna have an issue, right? Like it's one in 4,000 chance to be a carrier for muscular dystrophy, but like it happened to me. So I should really start playing the lottery, I guess. Um, although I did that at Christmas and I was the only one that didn't win any money, but whatever, besides the point. It's like pouring rain outside. <laughs> so I talk about this with anyone who will listen in my real life, but putting it on the internet scares me a little bit, but it's too important to not talk about. Uh, I don't think that enough people share why they're doing IVF besides for infertility issues, which is a very real problem. We're actually pursuing IVF to avoid a genetic issue, which is much more common than I thought based on conversations with our doctor, but I certainly didn't know about it until I was in this situation. So I hope this helps you if you're in a similar position, or even if you just weren't aware that this is even a thing. So we're pursuing IVF because we found out when I was pregnant with our daughter, I found out I'm a carrier for Duchenne Becker muscular dystrophy. Now, the way that we actually found out about this was my husband and I decided to get every type of testing we possibly could because we just, we are in inquisitive people at heart. We want all pieces of information to make any sort of decision. So we err on the side of more information. So around the 10 week mark, they offer you things like genetic testing for the parents. They can also test for the sex of the baby and likelihood of Down syndrome. It's really cool. They can like separate out the mom's blood from the baby's blood, but that's a whole other story for another day. So we did all of that testing. We actually were not gonna find out the sex of the baby because my husband talked to me years ago into being surprised. We were still gonna get it tested, but we weren't gonna look at the results for that specifically. But we got all the other testing done. And so I go into the office for probably my 12 week appointment. And, and keep in mind I'm alone because it's 2020 and dads aren't allowed in the office at that point in time. And my husband's on the phone and my doctor was just like a saint. He was, he was wonderful. He had a ton of bedside manner, which I really appreciated in this moment because he kind of sat me down and was like, we did find something. You are a carrier for Duchenne Becker muscular dystrophy. And this really took me off guard because we have no family history of this anywhere that I'm aware of. And he said, you know, it can be a spontaneous mutation or it can be, you know, passed on by family members. The way that he described it to me um, is that if the child is a carrier and they present symptoms, then their muscles will kind of rot from the inside out over time. They will likely be in a wheelchair by the time they're in high school. They don't typically live past 30 or 40. You end up dying younger because your, like the muscles like around your heart and all of your other, you know, key organs will just kind of stop functioning. It's really scary. It's a scary disease. And he was like, it's, this diagnosis in particular is tough because it doesn't matter if your husband is a carrier. So with most of the genetic testing, they will test the mom. If the mom is a carrier for something, then they'll test dad for free to basically see if, if you guys are carriers for things that match up that you need to be worried about. But this, it didn't matter. It's because it's X chromosome passed. If I am a carrier, then I have a 50-50 shot at passing it to my children. And the way that it works, because it's X chromosome passed, boys only have one X chromosome because they have an X and a Y chromosome. A male that's a carrier has it. A female that's a carrier will typically not present symptoms because you have two X chromosomes and your body tends to use the one that is not messed up from what I understand. It's like a super basic explanation, guys. Like, don't take my word for, for all of that in terms of accuracy. This is just what I've understood over time. So that was one of the first times in my life where I feel like I had like that Charlie Brown moment where everything thing just sounds like, rah, 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 rah. like I was not processing everything that was being said to me because I didn't know what it meant. I was like, I don't know 
because you know my husband wasn't there to process it with me I had no family history of this like no one knew we have no idea if my grandmother is a carrier she's one of seven though so like and they had boys so I don't who knows who knows where where this gene came from and my doctor was like if this is information that you would make any sort of decision on like in terms of continuing your pregnancy we'll want to know that as soon as possible because of just where you're at in your pregnancy and things like that and it was also tough is you know we didn't know yet if our kid was a boy or a girl right like we didn't we didn't know the sex of the baby at that point point. and to make matters worse i don't know if they didn't test my blood properly for the other test that tells you the sex of the baby or if they lost it but they didn't have the results and that was going to take another week to get <sighs> so we rushed to get that test just so that we could have the full picture of what's happening right and the whole time i am extremely nauseous and feeling awful because it's first trimester and i had i was having a really hard time on a lot of different levels with my first trimester and then this agonizing weight of like is my kid gonna have this like really awful disease that I can't do anything about? And there's the emotional toll that you know that it's gonna take. There's the financial toll that you know that it's gonna take. And we just, we just weren't sure like what to do, uh, quite frankly. And, and actually, in the meantime, while we were while we were waiting on the the results for the sex, they actually sent us to uh, a high risk OBGYN who had a more powerful ultrasound because they thought we might be able to see on the ultrasound if it was a boy or a girl. And um, they actually let my husband come in for that one. It's the only ultrasound he got to see. And they gave us a bunch of disclaimers about how like at this stage, like it's really only 60% accurate for what you see under an ultrasound. But they were able to see that it was a girl. And the ultrasound tech was very confident that it was like clearly a girl. And that is the only time in my life I've ever seen my husband tear up because she was like wiggling around and you know he was like that's a that's a, that's a baby like it looks like a baby on there and even though she's probably like you know microscopic at that point but still it was it was really cool and then a few days later my doctor called me at like 7 p.m to be like, hey, like I have the results and, and it's a curl. And that means you, you shouldn't have anything to worry about. It's not 100%, but you know, but that was the result that we needed to really not have to pursue further testing or, or anything like that. So, I mean, that was really like the big drama of our pregnancy. Everything else was fine and Nora's healthy as far as we know. Um, she hasn't shown any signs of muscular dystrophy, which is good. Again, we don't, we don't know if she's a carrier. We don't plan to find out. It's something I'm gonna tell her about when she's older, but if she is a carrier, I don't want it to change how I raise her, if that makes any sense. Like, I feel like I would be so worried about like, is this the last time that she's gonna get to like, you know, run around and play or something like that. Like, I just, I don't want that weighing on my mind. I would rather just find out if I find out that she is affected by it, so. So we do want more kids. We definitely want more kids. We would also really love to have a boy at some point for family balancing, just because it's a different experience. And But I also think about like, how much it hurts when she falls down on the driveway like she did yesterday, right? And like, if her whole life included some really terrible suffering that I could have prevented. We would rather try to minimize the chances of having a child with muscular dystrophy. We have insurance that helps cover IVF, which is absolutely incredible. And the medical realities are that you can screen for things like this now with IVF and not use embryos that have that gene, which is, I just feel very lucky to be born in a time where that's even possible. I think the official numbers are that they can avoid that gene with 98% accuracy. So there's, there's definitely still a possibility. And like, it's like a one in 4,000 chance of being a carrier. So like, 
at this point, every time people are like, oh, it's super rare. I'm like, well, I, uh, I'm already one in 4,000, so that's great. But you know, if it happens, if we do have a kid that has it, I will love them just the same. It's not gonna change like how we treat a child. Like we're gonna love them every bit as much as we would love a healthy child. And we would give them as many of the amazing experiences that we can to make them feel like, you know, a healthy kid. But it is tough to think about. It, it is. So my advice to people is that if you are planning to have a child, and if you would make decisions based on genetic testing results, whether that's, you know, financially planning for the future, whether that's what type of house you want to buy, like, do you need to consider wheelchair accessible housing and things like that? Or, you know, like if you would terminate a pregnancy based on certain results, get that genetic testing done before you get pregnant because you can do it before you get pregnant. It's not based on the baby. It's based on your blood as the mom. And then again, like the dad, they'll test the dad if, uh, if they need to like look for something else that matches. I wish I had done it before because we could have done IVF the first time and not had the same type of stress while I was pregnant. But I, quite frankly, just didn't think it would be an issue. And most people don't. Most people aren't going to have an issue, right? Like, it's one in 4,000 chance to be a carrier for muscular dystrophy. But, like, it happened to me. So I should really start playing the lottery, I guess. Um, although I did that at Christmas. And I was the only one that didn't win any money. But whatever. Besides the point. I just don't want anyone to have to go through what we went through when we were pregnant. So do the testing early. Give yourself that peace of mind. And then you can check one thing off your list of things to be stressed about when you're... <laughs> when you're pregnant. If you also got genetic testing results that you were not expecting, I would love to hear about it in the comments. It would certainly make me feel less alone. I don't think it happens to everyone, but it probably is more common than people think. But thank you for listening. And please share with people that you know that are thinking about having kids because again, I think this is an important consideration. And I want everyone to have the least stressful pregnancies that they possibly can. I would love to share more about our IVF journey in the future. So if that's interesting to you, I would love if you subscribed and also if you gave this video a like so that it can hopefully reach more people and help educate them on why people might be pursuing IVF besides the traditional fertility issues. So thank you so much and have a great rest of your day.